Thanks everyone for joining us. We have here director Ina Weisse and lead actress Nina Haas here to talk about their film, The Audition, with Annette Insdorf, Columbia University professor and author of books, including Cinematic Overtures, How to, How to Read Opening Scenes. Thank you. And I am so honored to be with these two very talented women. First, um, congratulations to Ina Weisse for directing the audition. It's about a violin teacher who is as emotionally taut as the strings of her instrument. And this acclaimed actress, Nina Haas, plays the perfectionist Anna with powerful restraint. My first question to both of you, prior to making the audition, have either of you played string instruments before? Well, you know, if I'm if I'm starting, I um, no, I never have. I I learned a little bit for another film I've done, like I don't know, ten years ago or so, actually with the same violin teacher. So she helped me again here. But uh, I learned the piano. So I got an instrumental education, but not with a string instrument. Right. And uh, Ina, I'm, I'm curious, any background in playing the violin or any other string instrument? Yes, I played violin uh, for a long time, for 13 years. And my, yeah, I must say this. So it's a long time. It was helpful for me to know this musician world. And I think it lends a tremendous authenticity not only to the scenes where music is actually played, but to the very rooms in which music is in ingested. Now, I read that, Nina Haas, you are also a trained opera singer. I gather you sang the role of Rosalinda in a 2007 production of Die Fledermaus, and it was for Barbara in 2012 that I think you did your own piano playing. Since it really seemed throughout the audition that you are indeed playing, can you talk a bit about the preparation for such a rigorous role? You mean in, in, in terms of playing the instrument or the whole preparation? I of the more part? the instrument because I know that you're such a great actress that you can take on any character based on screenplay rehearsal, but there's a special craft involved yeah. in the violin. Well, and it, I must say that was my first way into the character Anna, really by feeling myself again, that it's a difference between playing the piano and the violin because this instrument is on you. It becomes like a, like a part of your body. It, it, you feel the heat of the instrument. It's slightly more intuitive, I felt. So you gotta just trust your preparation and then go for it because you can't always look, you know, at the piano, you see what you're doing, you know, if you want to, but here you, you just, you have to feel it sometimes. So that was this back and forth within the character as well, that you, between control and letting go, you know, and this is for me, the moment where creation happens, you know, That's right. and I, I understand the, the, the pressure, especially in the classic music world, you gotta train, otherwise you can't come to a moment of cre creation. But uh, it's just a question of how much fun on the way do you have to lose <laughs> you know, to get there. So uh, it really helped me, but just technically what my teacher did, she, because she also worked with refugee kids mm -hmm. from Syria and she developed a method where she did a lot with colors, you know, the strings are colored and the, so you have a more intuitive way of learning the notes. And, uh, and you, you lose all the fear of starting to play. So I actually learned, you know, little pieces and all of that before we started to get to learn the shakon and these nice, very difficult pieces Ina gave me. <laughs> So, so um, but I, I had a feeling I, I could produce tones that I could listen to even. So that made me feel more secure with feeling I, I know where it sits, how, and she, she trained me especially with the bow, the hand who holds the bow, because you gotta be quite flexible, but still strong. That was like, took me a lot. I think I, I trained, let's say, I started six months before, and then really trained like three months before, I would say. Yeah. 
yeah, to be able to forget, you know, because I, I knew there will be this point where I myself will sit in front of a quite a big audience. And if it looks like I can't play the violin, uh, I felt then you, you wouldn't believe it as the audience in the cinema as well, that this is Anna, you know, and I wanted her to be a very good violinist. So I was, I was glad to, to put the work in basically. Well, it, it comes across and it's almost as if you as an actor in this particular film had to be working from both the basis of the violin as instrument and of the screenplay. Um, and that leads me to a question for Ina Weisse. Your first feature was The Architect in 2008, and that was also your first collaboration with Daphne Charizani. Uh, this Greek-born screenwriter is a director in her own right, having directed Makeup, a documentary, and the fiction feature Madrid. Could you tell us a little about how you work together? For example, on the screenplay, are you in the same room? or do you do drafts that you exchange via email or <laughs> what's the process? Interesting question. In the beginning, we were sitting together a lot in one room and talking, talking, talking about scenes, about our families, about um, our stories with the instruments, about our teacher. And then at one point, one of us put the computer and write something in the computer. The other one is walking around and um, say something. So in the, in the first months, we were very close together. And then I start to write in scenes and then I found, I give them the, her the scenes, we talk together and I went on with writing. And then we talked together and she was writing the scene. So, and uh, yeah, we, we really, we, we did it together. At the end, she made um, her own film and she was very in her, in her, own, in her own world. But um, it was good to have the experience from the architect to work together because I know that we share a world. If I speak from something, I know she understands from what I'm speaking. And so we de developed the story around her language point of departure for, the, for, for this uh, story was a woman torn inside, struggling with herself and others struggling with her husband, struggling with her student, her son. And um, yeah, so you can say that the structure of the story is basically evolved from this different pers perspective, pers perspectives um, of this woman. And did you write the part of Anna directly for Nina Hoss? When I started writing this, I thought of Nina to play Anna. But while we were writing, the character got older and I had to change my mind. And then the character got younger again and I was finally able to ask Nina. So, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think was so happy that she said yes. <laughs> I can see why. And I think everyone should know that Dina Weissig. No, I don't hear you anymore. I don't hear you anymore. There's something with your microphone. Perhaps. Um, yeah, now, I, now you're back. Yeah, it, it, it starts cracking at a certain I'm so point. sorry. No I'm worries, sorry. but now you're back. You're back. Okay. I wanted everyone to know that Ina Weissig is also an actress. I remember seeing Never Look Away, where you played the wife of the evil Dr. Siband. So I have a question for Nina Hoss. How is it different being directed by, let's say, Ina Weisse, who is an actress, versus uh, Christian Petzold, with whom you worked on Barbara and Phoenix? Well, you know, we both actually talked about it and asked ourselves, is it such a difference that she is an actress or not? Does it... Yeah, yeah, does it matter? And I can say, as a director, not at all, because I think, and that's also uh, what I find uh, with Christian, that you, if you have a certain sensitivity, you know, that is just very, very helpful for, for a director in terms of finding a way to come together as actor and director to find one language and where you come to a certain moment where things float 
or where you feel ah, this scene somehow doesn't work and you're not afraid to both feel it and you kind of go and <laughs> find it, you know, find the core of that scene, even if it means you throw things away and stuff. So that, um, I don't think it has a lot to do with her being an actress. What I did find, she knows, of course, about the, um, the strength and the moments, like if you have an emotional scene, the first one is the most loaded one because you keep it the whole time until this moment of the camera is rolling. You won't find that the second time, <laughs> the second take. You might find something different in the third, but then it gets kind of wobbly. <laughs> then you kind of need to maybe do it six more times or 10 more times or so to, to create something new. And she very much knew that. And that was very helpful to know as an actor that she knows exactly where my, my strength is now, if I'm tired or you know, emotionally tired or so. So that I could tell she knows exactly um, what, how it feels, how it feels, yeah. And I noticed because I do read end credits that in addition to women directing, screenwriting and in the lead role, you had a female director of photography, Judith Kaufman. Is that unusual for a German film? That we are so many women? Yeah. Oh no, I don't think so. Good. But, <laughs> <laughs> no. but you know, it was, um, I was looking for the character and I was looking, are there warm, um, yeah, how they are in life and how, how they are thinking. And that was, I, I wanted to know these things and woman or man, no, that was not so, I don't know the word necessary, das war nicht so wichtig. Um, that was not so necessary for me. It's the character, it's a man or woman. I don't care. Right. If they have these um, particular things um, which they are necessary for me in the film. Understood. You know, it's, it's a question in the United States that there simply aren't enough women directors, women DPs getting work and getting acclaim. So when I noticed that a film is so female driven, both on screen and behind the screen, it becomes, I think, noteworthy and something that should be celebrated. Um, now, I read that Nina Hoss's favorite directors at least some of them overlap with my own, namely John Cassavetes and Francois Truffaut. <laughs> and um, I was curious also for Ina Reise, your inspirations in terms of being a director, are there particular works that you feel influenced by? So the first name, I must say it's Bergman. I'm really, I really loved him. Um, if I was young, I saw a film from Bergman, I was, pfft, you know, it's like that. And Truffaut was, uh, too, Truffaut aussi. Uh, these kind of human, humanity in his films, I really, really loved. And of course, later, Casavitas too. It's, um, I love this film. And that's such a, such a power. So, but Bergman was the first man, as first man or first director, um, I was inspired. Sean Nick is your husband and he directed a film that I really admired called In Times of Fading Light with Bruno Gatt yes. from 2017. <laughs> um, I'm so happy if I tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know this is a stupid question and the answer is probably no, but because I showed the tin drum in my class a few weeks ago at, that, that I do for the 92nd Street Y in Manhattan, I couldn't help when I heard the name Anna Bronsky, I sat up because I said, oh, that is the name of Oscar's grandmother in Die Blechtrommel. I'm assuming that that's just me and that was not intentional. You were the first, first one who said this and it's true. <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that is a film that has had an effect on you as well? As well, yes. But the name, yes. It's a long story with the name, but I say yes. 
So. Well, I'm, I'm delighted. I mean, and I have to admit to you that once I realized, oh, that's the same name because I had just been talking about Oscar, the world of Gunter Grass and the brilliant adaptation by Folke Schlendorf. So I started thinking about the fact that Anna has a son and he's being pretty difficult. It's not that he's decided to stop growing at the age of three, like Oscar played by David Bennett. It's that he is trying to figure out his identity while observing adults who he does not think are acting correctly or be better than they should. And that is a little bit related to Oscar. So. I must tell you, it was, the search was so complicated for the son. He has, to able, he has to be able to play the violin, hockey, French, and of course acting. And so, but yeah, we found him, but it was a long way. Was he, had he already acted before? Um, once. Yes, once. Very, very persuasive. Yeah. And that actually leads me to a question I really found powerful. The last shot of the film, the close-up of Anna's face, half obscured at the doorway, watching her son playing in the school orchestra in the classroom, she or her perception is visually split in two. And I was curious for both the actress and the director, you know, did you want to end with this kind of ambiguous questioning of perception? Because we don't know ultimately what's inside Anna, and maybe she doesn't know what's inside herself, or am I reading too much into it? No, I wanted to end with a question. And um, this face is the question, and uh, with the door. And I was looking for music, which um, is no interpretation for the end of the scene. Yeah. That works very, very well. I'm, 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 I know I've written a book recently about how opening scenes prepare the viewer to watch the rest and how important that is. But closing scenes are so crucial because it's the last thing that we take to continue dreaming with. <laughs> um, I like it also because it leaves a space uh, because it's really interesting when people talk to me about the film, everyone interprets the end in a different way. And I find that very exciting because also I, when I watch it, I'm like, I find her a bit scary, <laughs> but at the same time, I think, yeah, uh, maybe there's a, there's this uh, clock, I'm sorry. <laughs> which is, uh, um, yeah, it, it's, 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 there's so much in it. And I love that you just see half of her face. So you can't really read her. And, exactly. uh, and, that and that leaves the question that Ina is talking about. You, you don't yes. really know what she's going to do and how this is going to end or continue. Yeah, I, I felt that very strongly. Now, one of the reasons that I think your performance is so strong and that the film works so well, it's not just your brilliance as an actor and the choices that Ina Weisse was making throughout. Casting is crucial in a film like this. And Ilya Monte, I believe that's the name of the young actor playing Alexander. I'm curious about where you found him. Has he ever acted before? And what it was like for Nina Haas to work with him? Because the relationship of a student to a teacher can be related also to a young unknown uh, performer on screen with a celebrated actress. So how did you find Ilya Monte? During research at the music high school in Berlin, I met Ilya, Ilya Monti, who plays the, the violin student of Anna, and accompanied him um, for a long time, long time before shooting. And um, we spoke a lot together. It was the first time for him being with a camera. And um, I put my, cam my camera and I was in, in his, um, how do you call it, if he is working with his teacher and I filmed him. And um, so we had, a, we had a long time together. And so I think it was good for him that um, she was not ashamed that the camera was there. And then um, I worked with him and Nina before shooting and it was like this, it worked. So, <laughs> so Nina, you have to tell. <laughs> No, but I helped immensely. But I very, we have to work very physical with them. 
he, he, he runs this, the, the stairs up and down. So um, to, that he is really in, in the emotion. And, and for Nina, working with this, um, he's a non-professional actor as far as I can tell, but his playing is quite professional. And here you were playing such an intimidating perfectionist. Was it during rehearsal that the two of you found your level of trust and connection? Or did you want to keep things tense even while shooting? No, it was quite, do you say imminent? Like when it immediately happened that we, we liked each other. So that was really helpful. <laughs> like we, uh, I had the feeling he trusts me and uh, he likes Ina. And so if the three of us are in a room, he feels okay. And he feels, uh, he, he doesn't have to be ashamed of anything. And uh, he's quite a confident boy. Uh, and, and what I found really amazing, and of course was very helpful for me and Ina, that he had no trouble repeating things because that's the main problem with kids where I completely I am with them I understand I also find it horrible to repeat the same thing again and again and again but that's our job you know and uh, but kids go pretty quickly like oh, why but I've done it but it was good why do we have to do it again you know? and Ilya never he and that came from having the discipline mm -hmm. of a musician where you play and uh, rehearse the same piece again and again and again. And I had the feeling he's not so fearful um, that a teacher is maybe a bit strict or so. You know, he was kind of, he actually gave us the idea with the sack on the, on the shoulder because a teacher of his dad, but not in the manner Anna does it, but just as a little help if you always raise the shoulder that this makes you think, ah, I better don't, you know. <laughs> but you can, of course, we, we were able to use it uh, in a great, it helped me a lot for Anna, having to do all these things, you know, and then and this thing, the belt, and that obviously was uh, not an idea from Ilya. <laughs> but uh, but he, was not, he was not afraid at all. I had the feeling he, we made sure he never takes it personally. And uh, he was really up for it. He loved it, I think. And that was, um, that, that, that made me feel good. And I was able to go as far as I could, you know, as Anna, which was sometimes scary. I can imagine. It was scary <laughs> sometimes to watch it. For example, <laughs> even the scene you're referring to, it would be one thing to simply put something on his shoulder and make him stand straight. But Anna runs to the bathroom and we don't know why. We have no idea what motivation it is. When the toilet paper unravels, I got the feeling that Anna is unraveling because that's the image. And then when the core of the toilet paper is taken, I go, oh, that's what that was. But I didn't know that. So mm -hmm. there's a whole process visually that I'm sure Ina Weissa was very well aware of, you know, that makes us go into a little internal thing before the external result is presented. Um, so in the very few minutes we have remaining, I just wanted to acknowledge one other actor and ask about his casting. Uh, Simon Apkarian is such a formidable French-Armenian actor. I've seen him in films from the Middle East, uh, for Israel, uh, Get, and in many French films. The relationship, the physicality of the relationship between this string <laughs> instrument maker and his wife and you, it felt so authentic, so lived in. So I was just curious if the two of you could talk a little bit about the casting of Simon Apkarian and the way that you work together for this. You understand that this couple has been together for quite a while. <laughs> I know Simon Apkarian and um, Jens Adinus from, I know him from films, of course, long time before. But when I finally met them, both Simon in, in Paris and um, Jens in Copenhagen, it was soon clear that it would be wonderful to work together. So the casting was really um, that we eat together. And it was the same with Nina. It was not the casting, but we, we, um, we met together and we were eating and drinking and we spoke hours. I don't know, four or five hours. 
And you said it, if you can eat together and talk together and speak together, you can work together. Yeah. And so it was with her, it was with Simon and um, with Jens, it was the same. Yes. And before shooting, Nina, Simon and, and, and me, we were together in a room and talking about the roles and the atmosphere. We, we talked a lot about, about atmosphere and about the characters and we trust each other. And perhaps that was the, um, the thing between us that we really trust trust each other in this in this movie i think i hope nina can say the same but that was too with with jens and with the boys so uh, for me the um it, i wanted to create a space where the the actors feels comfortable but then they can be free and then they um, you know i know how it is like to be in the front of the camera and um i know what kind of courage and overcoming it often takes to it, admit some uh, certain situations. And um, yeah, trust was the word. Yeah. Mm. And, and for Nina working with Simon Abkarian, I mean, was there, um, was it either in the preparatory or during shooting phase that you developed this kind of closeness? I think it was similar like with Ilya. And, uh, and yeah, this whole cast, that is also maybe the strength of Ina to find the people that really work well also as personalities, maybe as actors, um, because then you can go further, you know, and you don't, yeah, you don't get stuck uh, very quickly. And it was the same with Simon because he, um, I was just genuinely interested <laughs> in what he comes up with, you know, I was just, we, we I had the feeling we trust each other and whatever the other person would do, we would go with it, you know. So it was a very intuitive way of acting with each other and um, and being there and awake. And, and that's what he's about. And, that's, and what he's about is also having this, always this little spark of humor, you know, which I, what I love, you know, this little, where, and I thought that is very nice that Anna, chose someone like this, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it, it makes her so complex because of, through him, you think about her also, you know, why, why they stay together, what is it, what is the bond? It's not only the humor, it's also, sometimes I thought where well, he could have asked a little bit more what she wants, <laughs> so, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's she, he can just keep the balance, you know, the very fine line and he's genuinely sympathetic. And that I thought is also fantastic because it doesn't give our story this kind of, yeah, of course she has to be with another man because the husband's horrible or whatever, you know, it makes it all very complicated. And First thing we see Philip do is he plays the guitar at the dinner table. I mean, right away I feel like, oh, this is comfortable music as opposed to rigorous music. And yeah. then he doesn't have to ask her anything uh, to ask Anna. Because you see in the restaurant scene that he knows what she's thinking. Her indecisiveness is such that, look, he's going to give her his plate anyway. <laughs> so why even, why even go through the process? And I think that as a director, you know, you did something very uh, kind of clever and sticky in a way. The first time that we see Anna emerging from a sexual bed situation, it's dark and it's a long shot. And I assumed that it was Philippe, her husband. And then it's a shock for me to learn that it is her colleague, Christian. So, yeah. you know, th there's a, a level of surprise that you have invoked in me. <laughs> but I want to say one thing to, for the casting, or to the casting. Now it, 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 uh, it seems to be that it was very quickly as I met these two men and we said, okay, we'll do it. I need one one year to find the the, the, the right person for um, for Nina. But it's it's really um, that they are good together. <laughs> it was not like that. <laughs> so well, because look, if you think about the numbers here, since. Christian tries to get Anna to join his string quintet. You know, I started calling in my head her family unit of 
three was a trio. When she has Alexander join them for dinner, it's this very non-harmonious quartet. But ultimately, what I think you've succeeded in doing is with your characters of the two young boys, Christian the lover, the husband Philippe, and the formidable Anna, this movie is a quintet, um, not of strings, but of actors, their faces, their bodies, their backstories and characters. And we care about all five of them, even if Anna is the anchor of the quintet. So we I know that at the about, end of the time. <laughs> we are thinking about the title quintet, but then we said, no, it's too obviously. <laughs> so. And it's been used before. Uh, there was a film called Quintet. I'm trying to remember now. Was It's e either James Ivory or Robert Altman. Yeah. <laughs> <That's a film. laughs> I congratulate you. Thank you for joining us. And I hope Thank you, you so have a great life in the United States and around the world. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.